Today we are going to have a look at another Gilead product. Yes, still Gilead, not Gilead. I, I, I'm not sure I will call it, still call it Gilead. Meet the Glacier RGB. It got two of Gilead's stellar ARGB fans, a biggest dual tower radiator with six copper heat pipes and a beautiful base completely filled with those orange direct touch heat pipes. Now, what's kind of interesting about this is that it is using Gilead Stellar fans. And if you have watched our take on those fans, they were okay budget fans, but due to their kind of measly 1.3 millimeters of H2O, they do not seem to be the very best option for a full-blown cooler, let alone a biggest dual tower one like, like, yeah. Uh, yeah, how is this supposed to be at the top of our benchmark list? However, if there is one thing I, I've learned about fans so far is that those numbers are at best a, a rough uh, recommendation and not like scientifically correct specs. So let's forget what we believe about the Stellar fans and treat the cooler as a standalone product without any pre-assumption. This Glacier Dual Tower Cooler comes in at 152mm high with a total of six direct touch copper heat pipes, which are traveling from one heatsink to the other one. As already mentioned, the fans on here are Gilead's own Stella fans, which are spinning at up to 1600 RPM while pushing 70 CFM at 1.3 mm of H2O. The fan speed is controllable via PVM, while the RGB that shines from those two rings and central area is coming from a 3-pin ARGB plug that allows you to daisy chain it to the other one. Ignoring the heatsink and fans, we will also find the mounting hardware for AMD and Intel, some thermal paste and a 2 to 1 PVM splitter inside of the Glacier RGB box. On the compatibility end, we are looking at LGA 1200, LGA 1150, 2066, 2011, 1366 and 775 for Team Intel. On the red side, it can be mounted on top of an AM4 and basically everything older than that until the older FM1 side. On the RAM compatibility side, it's the usual complication as any other dual tower cooler. As the right fan is clearly protruding over the RAM slots, we have something around 32mm of RAM clearance at the lowest point that the fan can be mounted on. Due to the fan being installable at basically every possible position along that heatsink, we can create whatever RAM clearance we need. On the flip side, however, we will add that height to the initial 152 millimeters that the heatsink already has. So you will need to watch out not to reach your case's limit. But uh, if this doesn't work for you, you can also take the right fan and install it on the left side where it will pull the air through the heatsink, creating a 100% clearance above your ramps. Also interesting to note here is that due to every side being usable to mount a fan, we could potentially use this cooler in a triple fan setup. Although this is even advertised somewhere on the box. So here. Triple fan option. Although this is advertised on the box, Gilly does not include a, a third set for, for fans. That, that doesn't make any sense. Now, onto the installation method because that was one hell of a ride. But it's important to note here that the manual that I got with the cooler is apparently not the newest one and if you go on the website you will get essentially the newest one. On Team AMD we need to completely remove the pre-installed retention bracket and backplate. Then we can take the included backplate and shove the screws through the appropriate hole and secure it with the washer on the other side. Just make sure that the AMD text faces up. After positioning the backplate we can then shove all four of the spacers on top. And now here comes the moment that my manual differs from the online one. In our bag of mounting hardware, we also got this AM4 CPU protection bracket. This one is supposed to be mounted on top of the spacers before we put on the bracket in an inwards pointing position and securing them with the thumb screw. Now what's interesting about this is that the supposedly newer manual does not come with any information about that bracket nor does the new cooler seem to be coming with said bracket. At this point I'm really unsure if every other piece and screw is exactly as long as mine but just so you know some will have that weird ass condom and other ones just won't. But I do get why they ditched that thing, it, it just looks weird. Over on Intel's side, we need to use the same backplate, but now with the Intel text facing up, pushing the screws through from the bottom and securing them 
with the washers on the other side. After positioning it behind the motherboard and putting on the spacers, we can position the retention brackets in an inwards pointing position and secure them with the thumb screw. Now in both sockets, splash some of that GC Extreme Thermal Paste on there, slap that heatsink on top, screw it down and break off your nails when installing the fans. Now with that weird ass condom out of the way, let's get to the actually interesting part. Benchmark. While using it on top of our 3900X, the Gilead Glacier RGB managed to keep the CPU at freaking 49 degrees C. 49 degrees C. That's the reason why I emphasize my wrong assumption that those Stellar fans are bad heatsink fans so much in the beginning. 49 degrees C above ambient is just a single degree behind the notorious Noctua NHD15. But let's now see if the Glacier managed to pull this off solely by brute forcing its way up. On our noise 2 performance chart we can see that Actually, no, the Glacier RGB did not brute force its way up the ladder. Actually, it got a pretty decent spot. From top to bottom, the Gilead managed to just be like a centimeter behind the Noctua NHD15, either a degree harder or a tiny bit louder, depending on what you are aiming for. Funnily enough, for a NHD15, which is a, a enthusiast aimed cooler, just like its price tag. The Glacier RGB, however, should actually be compared to, to something like a Silverstone Hydrogen D120. And if we look at those two, the Glacier RGB completely wipes the floor with that thing. So no, unlike what I believed at the time, the Glacier RGB is a freakishly good cooler. Max performance wise, it's pretty far up there and noise 2 performance, they did a, a really really good job too. Really not what I expected to find today. Okay, so where does this leave us? Well, to be honest, I still think they could have done better on, on the fans. As we've seen, they managed to use that heatsink a lot better than I expected, but knowing how these Stellar fans have performed on our fan benchmark, I think the heatsink could either push way more or be a bit quieter, maybe even at the level of a Noctua NHD15, who knows. However, there is one th very important thing that I want to point out about this cooler. On the website they say that its MSRP is around 49 US dollars or 48 euro, but actually I can get it here in Europe for 44 euro, and on Amazon US it is 39. $39 for a cooler that comes kind of close to a NHD15 that that's really freaking good. Now on the design side I will leave it up to you. Right now I'm unsure how well it's going to look in the b-rolls but let's just say in my opinion in person uh, the fans look a bit you know Chinese slap your name on, on the fan and there you go. But if you can go with the design or you are into that type of thing, then damn, then, then it's a really, really amazing bang for the buck cooler. Uh, probably the most bang for the buck I have seen for now in, in the dual tower world. It, it's, it's amazing. On the could have been better side, I just have a few minor things. First of all, the third set of fan brackets would be great. Um, that way it would make sense to advertise that triple fan mode. And maybe add a PVM splitter directly to the fans so that you can ditch the Y cable and maybe get rid of all of that cable cluster. But other than that, I did not expect that. I really, really didn't. Uh, so yeah, good job, kid. But okay, this should be it for Gilead's Glacier RGB. At this point, a huge thank you to Gilead for providing us this little freaking underdog. But if you want to keep watching, have a look at our take on the Stella fans that we used on here. It's going to be a different ride. On a side note, we also got a Discord server now, so if you want to hop on and talk, the link is down below. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.